Sunday evening in Louisville, Kentucky. And the Cardinals control the opening tap, and off we go with the number two team in the country. High low, Jordan Warren to the interior. Steven Enoch the slam. Making your presence known out of the gates. Enoch buries him on a block, a high percentage, not basket. Steven. We saw that exact play in shoot around. Chris Mack said to Steven Enoch, slam that thing home. That was vicious. That's exactly what Coach Mack said to his guys. Make a statement out of the gate and let them know what time it is in the paint. Enoch did just that. Cameron Reese nearly got caught in the air. Zirius Williams, his first triple try, averaging 14 and 10 for the Zips. Foul on the perimeter goes on Channel Banks, who draws the assignment on Ryan McMahon. Akron's a very confident bunch right now coming into this one from the three-point line, having knocked down 13 threes versus Youngstown State their last time out. So they're going to let it fly. That's a great equalizer in a college game. Can they connect on some of those threes to make it interesting? You see the starters for the Cardinals. They've now gone with this group all six games. Ryan McMahon has shot it well all six games. You mentioned the numbers. He's now 19 for 31 from three. He's shooting better than 60% from three. Just flagrant for distance. <laughs> the starters for Akron, meanwhile. The point guard is Lauren Christian Jackson, who hoists out of the corner and answers in a little look in the direction of Darius Perry. It's an Akron team that spreads you out. They're going to make you guard them on the perimeter, and they're going to attack driving lanes. They're going to look to play flat fast. Enoch backing down Cameron Reese. The tip and a foul drawn by Louisville on the interior by Dwayne Sutton. And I'll tell you, I, I, the media guide, Kenny Klein does a great job, the sports information director here, but there was an error. When talking about Dwayne Sutton, they have him listed as a forward. Where is the power in forward? Because this man is powerful. Undersized at 6'5", but a bully on the backboard. Chase the second chance opportunities. The glue that makes this team work. Fifth year senior, a local native, one of the team captains. He had 15 rebounds, a career high in that win on Wednesday. And Chris Mack couldn't stop using the word warrior when describing what Sutton does for this team. Four-point edge for Mack and the Cardinals out of the gates these first two minutes. Jackson loves to hoist threes. Oxygen. He said it's the great equalizer, and he is not gunshot. Chicago kid. Chicago tough. He's going to come out here and let it fly. Tell you time and time again, the guy you don't want confrontation with is the one who's got nothing to lose. That's Akron on the floor this evening. Darius Perry turned it over. He hasn't done much of that so far in the first five games. He's been elite in his decision making, and that's been something that's been a knock in years past. That was a lazy entry and it cost him. Williams faces up. And along two for Zirius Williams, the fifth-year senior. You said you saw him early in his career when he was at Dayton under Archie Miller. Checks a lot of boxes. Can have an impact on a game in a lot of different ways. A versatile type of athlete has length and athleticism, which makes him a tough athlete. And consecutive possessions with Louisville turnovers. Channel Banks got around it. Sirius Williams matched up with Jordan Wara. And he draws a foul. Sutton with the bailout on a reach, and Wara did a great job of contesting, recovering, moving his feet, keeping Williams in front. Just overzealous help side defense, just not necessary in that sequence. Well, this Akron team brings some of its best and most experienced players off the bench. And John Gross, a couple of subs early on, including Tyler Cheese. Dang React in as well. You saw Cameron Reese check out. Banks a good shooter. He's got a second Akron three. 
Young man shoot 40% from three. That's a confident shooter. You're gonna have to hang on that three-point line, run these shooters off, because it's gonna be volume attempts all evening long for the Zips. Laura, quick release. Left it short, rebound Williams. Akron's gonna run. And they're playing at the fastest tempo a John Gross team has ever played at this season. Nice finish by the big man, Dang React, the fifth-year senior from Australia. Might have got away with the shuffle of the feet right there. Either way, good execution, because I hear what's the... Something will run just in a 63-second span. McMahon. Doesn't need much space or time. There's a rebound by Sutton. Flips it to Enoch. And a foul on the way up. Sutton. Rugged. Active. Relentless. Those are adjectives for a guy that I'd like to play with on the court. Just doesn't give up on any play. Second chance opportunities for this potent of an offense? Yeah, you don't want that, Akron. Well, how about this? It's the second foul on Zirius Williams. Not even four minutes in, you're on the road for Akron. You're gonna have to preserve him. 16 minutes left in the first. Without question, he's gonna have to sit on the bench. It's one thing in a conference game. When you have an opportunity like this against the number two team in the country, how does that change things, if at all, for John Gross when a guy gets two? Changes a lot. I mean, there's only so many guys you can rely on to compete against the number two team in the country. You need all hands on deck, and you need your star to be available when you need him. 16 minutes left in the first half saddle with two. Not ideal. There's Tyler Cheese, one of the top scorers, getting 15 a game in his first two tonight. Ooh. Stood him up. Cheese. Senior guard from Albany, Georgia. with it, shot clock below 10. On the baseline, nice hesitation. It's a nice cerebral move from Perry, that decision making. There was, that was a warranted attack of the rim, an opportunistic because the path became available. A freshman, Greg Treble, turned it over. McMahon, left it for Perry. Open, off the shot fake. Another one. Check the box of decision-making for Darius Perry again right there. Doesn't take the contested layup, finds a sharpshooter for three. React, tough finish over Enoch. React's another one of those older guys on this roster who's gonna come out here and look to play. Has the body at 6'10 to compete down low. And he's matched up with Enoch. Nice finish with the right. As a former hybrid big, I like to call myself a dabbled sometimes in the middle, maybe more than I should have. <laughs> and uh, you like to see Enoch say, okay, I gave up one. I'm gonna go get it on the other side and be aggressive. He's locked in. Do we need to pull out the, the field goal percentages from your career or no? Please don't. I think people are actually listening like this guy kind of knows who he's talking about. They see the stats. Changes that for Off the pick and roll. There's a miss for React. Got to run. Louisville should still be... Put on the gas, play fast. You want to dictate the tempo. You've got the bodies to wear them down. Nice floater and another good decision from Perry. It's almost like a, a, a secondary break with the handler never giving up the basketball. Prodding, prodding, sees a path and goes. Yeah, we've been going here six minutes before a timeout and a bank three for Channel Banks, the senior who has already hit twice now from deep. Really staying true to form in his name. Using the glass here on a Sunday evening. You said it can equalize things. That's what Chris Mack thought in the game Wednesday against USC Upstate that started so similarly to this one. Close early on for this number two Louisville team, which already has a couple of threes from Ryan McMahon. The game that they played on Wednesday, Chris Mack liked the 
energy level early, but USC Upstate hit some shots early on, and Chris Mack didn't love the way that his team responded from that after some of the makes went in. Yeah, and they figured it out and then really turned it up defensively to pull away, but mature teams come out there and they don't care about who's on front of the jersey if their name brand recognition. Go out there and play, and that's the guy you lean on. Jordan War getting a rhythm jumper mid-range right there. Heat your guy up, and then the rest follow. First points for Wara, who we showed you is averaging 22 a game so far. Emeron Reese back into the game. Got it stripped and then threw it off Wara. Jordan Wara has been a talent the minute he got here. But he didn't really want to guard. Jordan Wara, your star, is digging in and guard, trying to attack the double team and generate a turnover. That's been the biggest maturation that I've seen with him. The, the want to, the desire to defend is prevalent. Shot clock at five for Akron. Lauren Christian Jackson has to get it up. Tough shot doesn't go. And Samuel Williamson, the freshman, got the rebound. Hey, that might have been a, looks like a double dribble he got away with there, Kimball, in the backcourt. Now a step back for Warp over the top of Williams. Jeez, on another drive. We'll go to the line to shoot a pair. So Cheese at the stripe, his second year at Akron. He began a couple years in the junior college ranks. He's a guy who can do it all. John Gross was telling us this today at shoot around. He can shoot it, he can drive it, and he passes it very well on a team that's got a lot of balanced scoring. And when you got guys that have the willingness and desire to do that, it makes it that much more difficult to defend willing passers. They're not all over the place in a college game. You saw Williams go to the bench. They, they had him in out of the timeout with two fouls, and maybe John Gross just trying to get as many possessions out of him as he can with the two fouls. Yeah, I mean, as, as long as you can keep it here at this point, you're okay with having him sit a little. Wara. Got another. Wow. That is eight quick points for Wara coming out of the timeout. You can't sag off him at that point, not with what he's shooting from the field and from three. There is no reason to sag off of him. You've got to hug him and make it difficult. Too easy. Jackson left alone. Same thing on the other side. Jackson left wide open from three. That's a catch and shoot. I don't care what your percentages are. You're going to convert that. Some mental lapses defensively on both sides, fair to say. That Kimball a little late getting over. A face up doesn't go for Malik Williams, his second game back from the foot injury. Jackson took some contact and it rolled off. Wara feeling it. Back iron and a foul on the rebounding action. That is drawn by Malik Williams. Well, how about the surge from Jordan Wara? Yeah, get used to hearing this name all season long. Jordan Wara has scored eight points in a span of 103. He did that before we went to that timeout. This is what he's done his first five games of the season. Yeah, he can get on a hot one. He's got the hot hand, he's got the confidence. And most importantly, what some people don't have, he's got the perpetual green light from coach. So he's earned the ability to take any shot on the floor. But he's not a selfish guy. You see a lot of shots taken. But a great percentage tells me they're smart ones that he's taken on the floor. He's got a mismatch size-wise going up against the five foot eight Lauren Christian Jackson, who got switched off of. Check out the spacing. Five guys beyond the three-point line. That is the norm in college basketball these days. Enoch. Too strong. And the diminutive Jackson the rebound. You said it, Akron, wa Akron wants to run. Cheese spinning. Can't finish. Oh, 
I like to see him play through Enoch a little bit, trying to get a low post touch, play inside out. Got everyone spaced out here. And Tyler Cheese generates a held ball, and the arrow points to Akron. And I'd like to see Enoch bury him on a block, show two hands on the post, as you see right here. That's interesting. A little quick to get that jump ball whistle. And possession for Akron now by three, midway through this first half. And then this call goes against Akron. They were running on the baseline out of bounds, so it gives it back to Louisville. Glasses off for John Gross. Fresh Kimball with it. That transfer from St. Joe's. So he's been very steady. That's the word Chris Mack has used for him so far. Here's your touch. It's a Perry triple try. Don't love the decision there from Perry. I think that's his first poor decision, really, of the game. He got the kick out, but it wasn't a high percentage three. Move it around some more. Maybe Reed Post get another touch for Enoch down low. Maybe it's a scoring play. Kick out to React. The big man can shoot it. He missed that one badly. Perry off the bounce. Wara nearly flushed it and a late be, foul call. That should be basket interference. I think the defender's hand went underneath the hoop to prevent the run. That's what Chris Mack is arguing. Yeah, let's take a look. Great drive identifying that you have an advantage against the big fella. I gotta take another look. That happened kind of fast at the rim here. I can't, the official gets in my way. I can't, I can't see if it's, if he's blocking the goal there or not. That's the second foul, at least for the time being, on Cameron Reese. And so I think they're gonna say it was, he just didn't slam it home, couldn't convert it. We call this a great one. Yeah, I didn't see anything, honestly. It didn't look like any goal interference. Laura, maybe by hanging on that rim, almost put himself in a tough spot. Self-sabotage to not be able to convert the goal. Well, and before that, on the other side of the court, John Gross and his staff, they thought a little bit of a late call. Yeah, I thought there was enough contact, though, during the whistle. I do believe there was contact. My more focus was, was the basket good or not? I think, I don't know if you can really dispute the content. Well, you saw Williams come back in. Reese to the bench. He is one of three zips now with two fouls a pop. And a bump on the perimeter. Fouls on Jordan Wara is first. Wara is trying to politic for the flop call. <laughs> Said you can't do that anymore. That's the flop. That's where the warning comes in and then a potential technical foul moving forward. It was five foot eight, 150 Lauren Christian Jackson trying to take that contact and perhaps sell it from Wara. Wara on the drive. Beautiful loader. Jordan Wara at any given moment can get a shot at any given position on the floor. To be gifted something like that on your team allows you to be a special unit. Not everybody is blessed with a guy you can say, go get us one. Louisville has it. Jackson threads the pass to Jaden Sales, the reserve big who muscled it in. Junior Ford at 6'9", has a power five body, so you might see increased minutes to go against an Enoch, a Williams, even a Sutton. Perry, long two, swirls out. Packard playing at a much faster pace than they have the first two seasons of John Gross's time leading the Zips. Wow. That's just not a fun assignment defensively as David Johnson will be whistled on the foul. Lauren Christian Jackson is five foot eight. 
there's not a guy within five inches of that low center of gravity. I mean, Johnson, how can you keep up with that? It's Barry Sanders with the basketball. Darren Sproles with the pill. I mean, that is difficult. You can't get that low and keep it in front, no matter how good your position is. Jackson can blow by you. Dribble drives, and Louisville is running. I should have said like J.E. on Hawkins, excuse me. Johnson on the push, lays it in, and Eckerd wants a timeout. Everyone running here. The lead's up to seven for Louisville after this. Mike, I better shut up and we better not blink, because the action is coming right at you. The future. The North Carolina basketball, that does include Cole Anthony. Always had a triple-double earlier this week. You'll get never-before-seen footage and sounds, UNC practices, games, other activities, also available on the ESPN app. It's a fun team to follow all season long. Their journey is, I think, going to be a special one. Active hands there for more on his trip. And Perry on the run out. Saved it, and possession stays with Louisville. Again, Louisville defensively is up the ante, and you're following suit from your star. Juarez with the dig in on the double team, then gets in the paint right here. It's Johnson initially, but then the traffic, because of that position, allows War to get the strip and then take it the other way. Star making things happen on the defensive end. Yeah, you talked about his defense earlier. We've seen good hands from him. And now a good find underneath to the freshman, David Johnson. Now, I say star in reference to Wara. You might want to get comfortable talking about star and alluding to David Johnson as well. As this guy gets more comfortable, his health, and gets his win, he's going to be a huge piece moving forward to this team. I envision him maybe being that point guard moving forward for this other positions so that doesn't diminish their roles maybe they are the point guards but Johnson's role is going to increase without a doubt he's a star and of course Louisville fans know his second game back from the shoulder injury has left his non-shooting shoulder he says it feels stronger now than it did before the injury before the surgery channel banks playing with two fouls Here's the freshman Greg Tribble Back out for Zerius Williams. Louisville's running. Zerius Williams, a little thrown with his rhythm being on a bench. Foul trouble. Sutton tried to follow the miss from Perry, and the ball belongs to Akron. Here's where Louisville overwhelms you. You're subbing in an All-American. You're subbing in McMahon, who's a three-point specialist, shooting better than 60%. And you're subbing in Malik Williams, who, alongside Stephen Enoch last year, at the power forward position, combined for 18 points and 12 boards. This Louisville team goes 9-10 deep. That overwhelms any team, let alone a mid-major in Akron on the road here, looking to try and make this thing competitive. To the point where the question you asked Chris Mack today is, how do you start to manage the players, the minutes, the rotations? Yeah, I mean, just as much as the team has to find their rhythm, so does coach with the rotation he's going to use and which ones in the best sequences and scenarios. They've ramped up the defensive intensity these last few minutes. Third three for Channel Banks, who's hitting that 40% entering tonight. Rotation's got a little bit too far away from Banks. So no matter how much effort from McMahon simply gave him too much real estate, too much distance in between. Johnson answers. How pure was that? Johnson's going to make me look good before the end of today. <laughs> Definitely by the end of the season because they've got one in Johnson. Turned over by Cheese. McMahon gives it up. Wara. Couldn't finish. Would it behoove uh, Nor War, excuse me, War to give that up to the trailing big in Malik Williams? Jeez, too strong. Threw it in the direction of the window and Dang Riak. These are some of the guys we talked about injury-wise that Cardinals fans have been so eager to get back, and now Chris Mack says this has really changed the intensity of our practices, too. Yeah, I said, Coach, why'd you decide to bring him back for that Wednesday game? 
versus USC Upstate. He said they were so aggressive and set the tone in practice, they were ready. Tyler Cheese draws a foul on one of those. It's on David Johnson, and that's his second. Furthermore, Coach said, I want them to kind of gain their legs, gain their wind, and get back into playing with games. So when Western Kentucky and Michigan roll around, they're better suited and prepared. I don't just want to thrust them into those high-level games. I want them to kind of get acclimated, reacclimated. And those are the next two games for Louisville after tonight. Friday in Nashville, Western Kentucky. And then next week here, hosting Juwan Howard in Michigan. You're not going to be eating that much turkey and stuffing. Maybe you have like one serving. Friday, you're going to burn all those calories right back off against that Western Kentucky team. That is a challenge. Johnson checks out with his two fouls. Chris Mack sends fresh Kimball in to replace him. Tyler Cheese makes both. So seven point game, and again, this feels very similar in some ways to how close things were on Wednesday. It's an old bunch, Mac. It's a tough group. They're not gonna lay down. I do think the defensive intensity has improved for Louisville, which is why they built the lead, but not a sizable one. It's an Akron team that's gonna fight in this first half. Can they stay along for the ride with the depth of Louisville getting in the second stanza remains to be seen. Williams passing out of the post. Kimball got caught in the air. And now a turnover. a couple possessions in a row. Louisville has gone airborne, thinking shot, only to then look to pass it. Cheese backing down Kimball. Spun into a double, and it stays with the zips. Ten on the shot clock. Louisville's been opportunistic in blitzing those guys with the double teams when they're blindsided. So when they turn and spin the pivot, they're meeting a defender, and that's generated some turnovers for the Cards. Good hands by one of the best defenders on the team in Malik Williams. Here's Sutton! <laughs> Defense king the offense. All effort from the cards to build. Proceed self. So he's happy a lot because his Louisville team's winning a lot. <laughs> In large part because they've been shooting it so well. They started the day at 56% from the floor. You see second best in the country. Yeah, and he's a guy shooting 77% from the field, 56% from the three-point line. Not a high volume from three. When the opportunity presents itself, he's taking those and knocking them down at a favorable clip. There's Williams, who only has those two points. He hasn't had the three-point shot going now his last three games. And that is an ill-advised shot. I mean, look, I, I know that you have that to your game, but you are lacking a rhythm. You want to put the ball on the deck, try and generate something playing downhill at the rim. He almost got a steal. Williamson dumps oh. it off now. And Williams can roll it home with the left. Jackson spots up. Rebound Williamson. Foul from the backside on Zirius Williams, and so that's three on him with over three left in the first half. Yeah, and I think they're probably going to push him to the bench for the remainder of the half. Is that frustration from the missed shots? Yeah, it's frustration, and it's just honestly, it's a lack of rhythm. Right? It's, everything's out of whack for him because basketball players are creatures of habit. When you sit on a bench that long, everything just feels a little off. Then you try and pursue a few threes that are you're flat-footed and you short them. Then that's in your head, and you're not thinking the game like you should. Hey, the huddle with Jack Collinsworth, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and Mark Rick gets you ready for ACC football. Like nobody else, some big games coming up, some rivalries this weekend, plus Louisville at Kentucky. They'll preview the weekend slate of games, keep you updated on all things ACC football, live Friday, 4 Eastern, Saturday at 2 Eastern, right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. You got a football promo for a basketball player who could also play football, <laughs> and Dwayne Sutton getting on the backboard there off the free throw block out, try and get themselves another one here. He's up to seven rebounds already following up the career-high 15 he had on Wednesday. 
It's the largest lead for the Cardinals tonight. Nice baseline pass for Sutton. Boy, he's had a good first half. It's a high level feel from Sutton. If that defense would have been tighter, he wouldn't have forced it. He would have made the extra pass. But defense was sagging off, and he made him pay. Again, shooting 56% from three because of the shots he takes beyond the arc. Rehack stuck with it, and then he missed it in close. War. Yes! Channel Banks cannot respond. So suddenly, after a 9-0 Louisville spurt, the lead up to 16. Kimball left alone. Jackson ducked around Wara on the perimeter and drew a foul. We talked earlier about the low center of gravity. How, how do you think you would have fared at your height going up against 5'8 Lord Christian Jackson? Uh, I would have been in foul trouble. <laughs> I would have been in a position like that. The nutmeg is the new move in basketball. Everybody talks about Trey Young's made famous going through the defender's legs with the ball, gathering it on the other side. I think Jackson would just go underneath me through my <laughs> legs directly to the goal. He's been fun to watch, though. Tough kid. He's been the one that's kind of put the team on his back here in the first half in some ways. Like playing croquet. Just go right underneath. <laughs> Taken away by Sutton. McMahon reeled it in. Follow not there by Wara in close. And now a tie-up between Tribble and Sutton. Two guys just competing. You love it. No funny business when they hit the ground, no jawing. These two guys want possession. I think McMahon would have would have been good for him to kind of gather himself to a jump stop there. I know the ball was kind of up in the air and some chaos. But at the end of the play, nothing, nothing aggressive there. Just two guys trying to trying to earn the ball. No surprise, Sutton's at the bottom of the pile. Well, the arrow was in favor of Louisville. And now Pat Driscoll will go have a conversation. Help ball. So it is a help ball. It will stay with Louisville. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Coach is trying to draw up something here to get either Enoch a touchdown low or get one of his shooters something coming oh, off ball. pop a three ball here a stoppage as well Dwayne Sutton just needed to get his left shin taped up maybe Enoch look for a slip here from Enoch at the rim you got him on the post you got him on one yeah that's what you wanted you had Enoch spaced out one-on-one. -on -one. Gotta get your big man in touch, keep him interested. Yeah, you've been calling for him on the block in this first half. A rare miss from Ryan McMahon. Enoch battling, he says, I'll just go get it myself. That's what a good big man does. Left hand finish. That's what a good big man does. Oh, you don't want to give it to me? <laughs> All right, I'll go up and serve myself at the buffet line. 11-0 run, you see, for Louisville. React with the size on Perry. And some fighting in the post. That's Perry's first. Hey, Perry, the foul was probably the best thing that could have happened right there. Going for a 6'10. Tell you right here, don't e knock the hustle as he chases down the, the, the loose one. And footwork that Gregory Hines would appreciate off the right shoulder with the left hand. Clinical stuff from the versatile big. Comfortable going outside, inside as well as he showcases there. Front end of the one and one good for Deng Ria. One of the best five men defensively in the Mid-American Conference. 
Late mid-major league in which this Akron team figures to compete right at the top. That's what John Gross thinks. Final minute, first half from the KFC Yum Center. Watch this Louisville team. They set good physical screens to open their shooters up. It's a lost art in college game. Offensive rebound for Sutton. That's his ninth board. Perry, no. And the rebound to Sales. Triple with his foot on the gas, turned it over. And a smart play by Perry. You've talked about his decision making. He knew the shot clock would be up. He's also a guy that can impact the game very heavily on the defensive end. Got to be the guy that sets the tone with his personnel on the floor. And he's done that. I've been impressed with the first half there as Perry's had. Numbers won't jump out at you, but he's managed this game very well in the first half. Yeah. And he walked with it. Try to do too much right there. Once you drive it, nothing's there. A couple of retreat dribbles and swing it. You got five seconds left. Bang, bang. There's four other weapons on the floor. You gotta involve them all. If they take something away, explore something else through ball reversal. Well, with three fouls, Zerius Williams does come back in here for the final possession of the first half. Triggers it into channel banks. Good if it goes. Off the mark to end this first half in Louisville. Well, the number two team in the country was tied at 17, and then Louisville with a flurry on Wednesday. Ryan already McMahon, approaching a double-double. Stephen Enoch. I mean, you can mention so many guys on this roster. They're loaded. I mean, Coach Mack is actually tasked with good luck figuring out who's not going to play because they deserve to be on the floor at any other college. Well, they begin this second half with the same group that they've started each of their six games with so far this season. Channel Banks hit a couple of early threes that had a couple early fouls for Akron. And Cameron Reese finishes through the contact high off the glass. Just how he drew it up. Top of the backboard without it going out of bounds and dropping on it. I say that in jest, obviously, but what you can agree on is playing aggressive, and not scared going at the rim, and it almost did become a, an out of bounds if just a little bit more of that ball would have reached the top. Foul was on Steven Enoch, and then Reese couldn't stamp a three point play. He wanted Enoch on the block. This is how he started the first half, and he took it right at Deng Riak. And React's the only true body with that height and the length that can really make it difficult down low. You get him in foul trouble. And Jaden Sales is another. But those two bodies are the only ones that can contend down low. You get them in foul trouble, and then it just becomes a feast. And I use that word with Thanksgiving mm. just around the corner. But second chance opportunities, the backboard, that's where Louisville's been dominant. Got to continue to own that part of the game. Who's got a better pun game than you? Anyone? I mean, Jay Billis has a law degree. I mean, Seth Greenberg is as good as they come. Sean Farnham, I got a list of guys who are ahead of me in that regard. I learn from the best. I'm like a sponge. I soak it up in my surroundings. That's the key, Mike. You are the pilot of the Silent N Jordan Bora game is not silent. That's that's your, your the, brand The right end now. is silent, the game is not. You can make that a t-shirt if you'd like. I'm surprised like they haven't already. It's so catchy. <laughs> <laughs> Reese a face up baseline J no and Wara is running Sutton off a wing drive goes to the line that's the challenge for this Akron team you got five guys on the floor who are a threat to shoot it a threat to put that thing on the floor and blow by you and score it at the rim. That is a, it's a lot of heat on a defense. It's something that is very difficult to navigate for 40 minutes and try and keep guys in front of you and keep the scoreboard from lighting up. Well, we have sung the praises of Dwayne Sutton so far. And we talked about his rebounding effort on Wednesday. And at some point in the locker room, as you see his drive toward the rim, 
afterward, Chris Mack said to him, hey, how many D1 scholarship offers did you have out of high school? He did this in front of his teammates, and Dwayne Sutton said, I, I only had three. But man, he has put together a great career here with the Cardinals. I talked with their strength coach, one of the best ones in the country, Coach Andy Kettler, and he said the guy is an absolute monster in the weight room. Challenges everybody to go out there and get better in that regard. And the final product speaks for itself as you look at jersey number 24. He fills that thing out nice. Dwayne Sutton works hard at it, and people follow suit, and he's one of the leaders on this team. Everybody has a role, so as much talent as there is on this roster, not everybody does the same thing. Not everybody's interested in the same thing. Jordan War is a scorer. Dwayne Sutton is perfectly engaged. Whoa! Stephen Enoch soaring! I just forgot what I was saying. Oh! Parents, turn your children away. This is only suitable for adults. Oh, oh, oh man, flex on a big fella. Rare air. Extra step on that young man's ladder. They just showed the replay inside the Yum Center as well, and the crowd greeted that with, whoa. It's the giving season. A lot of take there from Stephen Enoch. Oof. And just vicious with the dunk that he started this game with as well. Are we going to check the rim out? Or are we just going to keep playing like that thing's okay? <laughs> He's not matched up defensively with Dang React. Enoch got his hand on it. Perry on the push. Warp. Got it. to set up this slam. Hey, Mike, if you're not going to wear the seatbelt, get in the back seat, my friend. You think Akron's got the Sunday scaries now after that one? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Now, here's the thing. Anybody who says it's only two points, no, 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 no. That's not how this thing works. <laughs> when you rock the rim like that, the opposition sees it and says, okay, these guys are a little different. This is truly one of the best teams in the country with the personnel to back it. And then they get in your head a little bit, and then other plays start to open up because your team feeds off a momentum play like that. Enoch has had an impressive performance. Started with the dunk to begin the game. And right here to start the second half, a little reminder of how gifted he is. John Gross, the Akron head coach, told us this morning at shoot around that Stephen Enoch has about as good touch around the basket with both hands as anyone he's seen. He brought up David West. There, there's touch and then there's just power like that. Yeah, and he's got a little bit of both. He's able to shoot that three-point shot. It's eluded him this season as he's 0 of 7 from the three-point line. But that is without a doubt a part of his game. Him and Malik Williams both. They rarely share the floor together. But in talking about Mac's ability to have a bunch of rotations, he can be in that lineup alongside him. He's frustrated with himself. Goaltending tried to stop that Tyler Cheese drive. You're okay with it, not giving up on a play. Go get everything. He was going in anyway. Maybe frustrated he, he didn't think it was going to drop. Remember when John Thompson told Patrick Ewing, go out there, let him know who you are, and goaltend the first few baskets of the game? Sometimes those aren't the worst. Jockeying in the post, and this time Enoch draws a foul on Dang Riak, his second. <laughs> Of course, you got to body him after what he did. See Samuel Williamson check in. So the lead's at 20, just over two minutes into the second half. Why not throw him another lob? Touch doesn't help out Enoch there. Powerful sequence, though. Aggressive going at the rim. That's what you like to see from the big man. Jeez. Can't get the reverse to go. Harry on the push. Warren. Sitting on 18 points tonight. Still love the action for Darius Perry to push the tempo, get it to his star with the speed set for a look. Again, ranking the decision making and judging each play at the point position. It's a good one from Perry. He's been matched up on Cheese. Nice jump shot from the senior. She's the top scorer for Akron. First man into double figures. Good to 
decision from Perry. Into the big man. Left hand this time. You could tell Coach Mack told the guys at the half what I was clamoring for in that first half. More touches down low for Enoch. Let him establish himself. There is a distinct advantage down low. Foul on the inside off ball. And they get Enoch this time for his second foul. And so Malik Williams will come to get him. One of the questions you asked Chris Mack today was, would you like to play those two guys together? Something they didn't do much of last year. And Coach said, yeah, that could be rotation 86 of the 100 I could go with, with all this talent on my roster. He said, you're always going to worry about guys remaining locked in and not feeling like they're not getting their due, but this is a very selfless team. And he was confident they'll be able to weather that storm. Offensive foul, a push off by Williamson. Malik Williams had been a little slow to get up. He's grabbing the backside of his left leg. Obviously, that fifth metatarsal on the right foot is what's plagued him. But it looked like that was just a little stinger in the posterior, and he's good to go. Good cut by Cheese on a feed from Jackson. McMahon got caught ball watching help side right there, and Cheese good action off the ball to make it pay for the mistake. Wara going one on one, turns it over. Draws a foul on Williams. The Louisville of the second half. So, opening remarks coming from the big fella, very strongly worded in both sequences. It's like a cameraman's dream. You can just look around and find the best reactions after a play like that. Channel Banks sticks the three in, and you got mean mugs all over the place. Mean mugs, yeah. You got to practice the flex if you're able to pull it off. Not all of us are. I, I don't have any muscles to flex. <laughs> Part of the problem. Jordan Cornette, Mike Monaco, our entire ACC network crew with you from Louisville. And there's the big man on the right. Perry along through. Good rhythm. Perry off the bounce. That was a repetition stroke. You hate that it was towing the line in front of it. Not the best spot, but you made it. There's a reverse for Williams, just his second bucket tonight. Remember, he had one early, and a guy who's been averaging 15 and 10 have been quiet since. Maybe he can heat it up. I mean, it, as quiet as accurate has been, 15 points is not insurmountable. We've seen crazier things in college basketball, but Louisville without question, dominant current. That was a great post catch, and then Williams with the left. Great sign to see Williams start to find his rhythm and as he gains his win, they're gonna begin to increase those minutes when the leaders of this team. Banks with another. He's got five triples here tonight. It matches a career high for him for three-point makes. Guy who went for 16 at West Virginia in Morgantown earlier this season. Talk about rotations, another interesting unit out here for Louisville because they have so much depth. Another group that's gonna try and learn how to play together here. This will be a unit they use on the floor in very high pressure situations. An offensive foul on Lauren Christian Jackson in transition, he disagrees. Chris, Lauren Christian Jackson thinking, 5'8", he push off, these guys are twice my size. I gotta do something. <laughs> yeah, he's a guy who runs this Akron team, the head of the snake, as John Gross said to us at a shoot around today. Averaged 14 a game for him last year. He can be a nuisance defensively. And switched on to Wara. Don't love the decision there from Wara. Too much traffic for the big fella to handle collect, not violate with a charger, travel. 
tried to thread a needle, and there just was no pathway there. But for Chris Mack, you've seen a long jump shot from Perry after his make. The second one missed. You've seen the turnover, and there's a long way to go. And now the fouls for Louisville piling up as well. They've got six here in this half. That turnover from Warr on the other end tells me one thing. Let a man be who he's meant to be, a scorer. <laughs> he ain't comfortable passing that thing. He's a scorer. He's wired to score the basketball. I say that in jest because he has been doing a lot of other things to have an impact, most especially defensively. His effort there, I've been thoroughly impressed with. Yeah, we were chatting with Dino Gaudio, yeah, our great former Dino teammate, Gaudio, yeah. known assistant coach. He was talking about some of the assist totals for Warren, a conversation that he had had with Warren just recently. That was nearly another turnover. Kimball and Louisville get a timeout instead. What Coach Gaudio say? How many assists does Zerius Williams have this season? Jordan Warren said, yeah, that's how many I have as well. <laughs> Not just five many. of them. Chris Mack and Louisville, they took a timeout, nearly had another turnover. It's a 14-point game, seven minutes in. We were just talking about Jordan Wara's assist totals. The, the full story from Dino Gaudio, one of the assistants for Chris Mack on the right, he was telling Jordan Wara how you're going to defend Sirius Williams of Akron. He said, he's not passing the ball. He has, what, five assists in five games this year. Jordan Wara said, yeah, that, that's what I have this year. Dino Gaudio said, exactly. So, so imagine guarding yourself. <laughs> Get him into that mindset very seamlessly in that regard. Shot clock winding down, and Sutton is short. And there is Zerius Williams to the rebound. It's a big turn right here, potentially, for, for Akron if they can get one. Nearly a sixth for Banks. Cheese couldn't follow, and Williams can, using his 6-9 frame. This game is a 12-point game for as lopsided as it has felt lately. Akron is not dead yet. David Johnson at seven in the first half, but picked up a couple of fouls in just his second collegiate game. Jackson is very quick, but Kimball stuck with him. Now Reese draws a foul himself. Reese at 6'7", the junior. Been scoring at a decent clip, averaging nearly double figures, hovers around nine out of the gates here to start the season, but he's challenged them off the bounce, playing downhill, tucking that shoulder and being aggressive. Good on the first. Tuesday, 9 Eastern, right here on ACC Network. Unprecedented all-access pass into North Carolina basketball. Also available on the ESPN app. You've been talking about Armando Baycott this year. He was terrific against Elon on Wednesday. Well, we all know the legendary Coach Williams likes to have bigs out on the floor. Two at a time, if possible. Three out, two in. Baycott has started to figure out. I run the floor, I rebound, and I bury him on a low block for position. I can be a double-double guy. I'll tell you right now, this Akron team feels a lot like their matchup versus West Virginia to begin the season. Felt lopsided, but they fought in the second half, made some plays, and found themselves only trailing by two possessions with 45 seconds left on the road to West Virginia. Pick and pop, Stephen Enoch, his first triple of the year. He said earlier he can shoot it out there. It's his first one. That'll go a long way to add into his dynamic arsenal. Rolled out on cheese, and then Louisville couldn't secure it with less than 12 to go. So we've seen the slams. We got shooting as well from Steven Enoch. Enoch giving you his entire resume tape. The rim rattling dunks. It's a new day in college basketball. The big fellas can stroke it too. Akron's got to get it in. Zerius Williams too strong. John Gross all sorts of frustrated on the Akron sideline. Williams though gets it back with some defensive energy. John Gross never lacks energy on the sideline and intensity. Coach Gross took a OU team, Ohio University that is, in 2012 to the Sweet 16, had some success at OU, had some success at Illinois. Guy's been a, an assistant on some impressive staffs at Xavier and Ohio State. He knows how to win. 
and he'll get this program where it needs to be. That'll be a team that can compete for the league championship. Shot clock was winding down, and Lauren Christian Jackson got hit with a foul, and John Gross is irate. Jackson can only smile. Let's take a look. It's Coach Gross warranted here. Ooh. You see why coaches get animated on the sidelines. For a good reason. No contact of note there. And a bailout call is what Coach Gross is feeling. And they, I, I would imagine they're taking a look here to see if he got the shot off in time. See if the shot clock was was exhausted in time or not. Coach Gross not happy with the call. Given the lack of contact we saw there, not surprised. Well, Ryan McMahon and Lauren Christian Jackson had a moment afterward. They put their arms around one another. They're checking on whether the shot was a three or a two. And it looks like two. Jeb Harkness kind enough to come over and explain it to Jordan. So indeed, what I was kind of speculating is they wanted to see if it, the foul occurred before the shot clock expired. And then also deciding two or three, right? And then also to decide a two or three. So just a couple of shots for Ryan McMahon, who got bailed out with the foul call. You know how good a free throw shooter McMahon is. So that is a big swing to get it back to 15. And Akron had seized some momentum here in the second half. She's no. And the tip won't go either for Riak. Riak had no business tipping that. Take two hands and hoof it at 6'10. Emphatically complete that one. That's a push up. In the post, Dominique Williams. Give him a better look here. Malik shows two hands. Yeah, he definitely used that left arm as almost an arm bar of sorts and react. There was no flop. He, he felt the contact and sold it within the confines of the rule. Can't argue that one. He tried to, it was unsuccessful. And Akron trying to trim down this deficit even further. Jackson getting that low center of gravity, and it is another foul, this time on David Johnson. And so now it's nine second half fouls with 10.30 to go for Louisville. And, and look, they, I know the fans don't love the call, hence the chorus of boos, but there was a hip there. There was contact initiated from the defender that impeded the path of Jackson on the drive. Keep in mind, Jackson is 5'8". He is nine inches shorter than his defender in David Johnson at 6'5". It's just, that's a tough assignment. What makes Johnson special, despite all the gifts, is the great size he has at that point position. His elite size going against the 5'8 guard, that's tough. And Jackson converts on both. That's a tough guard at 5'8", Lauren Christian Jackson. Go into a hardware store, take the smallest nail, and try and bend it. And that's what you've got in this young guard from Chicago. It's tough. He's making a bend. He got sucked there by Johnson, who just muscled his way to the rack. And I said young. I misspoke. I mean, this is a three-year guy, so he knows and he's comfortable with his body. And going back to Lauren Christian Jackson. Williams still cold from three. 0 of 4 from beyond the arc, and now 1 of 15 in his last three games. And when you've got his set of gifts, the reliance on the three, you got to get away from. Find other ways. Put the ball on the floor. Draw fouls. Initiate contact. And a foul at this end. Williams draws that in the post through a double. Ah. 
Reese back in, React. Uh, shaken up some on the previous possession. Grimacing as he heads to the pen. Malik Williams, the junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is the front end. Or a battle for it. And it stays at this end. How about the hustle from Jordan Wara? Three throw block has been problematic in a few moments in this game for Akron. And talking to Coach Gross in the zips before the game, he said, My primary concern is the backboard and the ability to, to neutralize that part of the game. We were able to do it versus a very tough West Virginia team in Morgantown. Can we do it here? And it's been a challenge at points. As you look at the rebounding battle, plus 12 in favor of the Cardinals. Here's Wara. Short, loose ball. Everyone on the deck for it. it feels like Cards ball again. Sure is. Chris Mack goes over to help up Lauren Christian Jackson. And when that ball goes up, I mean, it's just an all-out blitz. Bodies flying all over, going for it. See, when we, I mean, when we did those drills, you didn't stop until you got the ball. It doesn't matter if you're out of bounds or not. The, 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 the prime goal was to get the ball. Nobody thinks let it roll off the floor. You fought off for that. Get the ball. That's a lot of work for a big man to get down there, too. It's true. You need help getting up. That's where your guards come into play. Two, three of them. Get over there. Lift you back up to play. Williams still pulled from three. Wara in the mid-range. Offensive rebound, Sutton. He's up to 13 boards in total. You can tell Akron's winded. They're a little worn down from all these fresh bodies and talent and depth of Louisville. It'll get to you eventually. The shot hasn't been falling, but great defense again for Williams. Held the ball, keeps it at this end of the floor. Darius Perry frustrated on the entry as he's talking to his big fellow Stephen Enoch. He felt like Enoch needed to step to the ball to receive it, not rest back on his laurels there. So the communication there from Perry to Enoch, hey, when I throw that thing down to you, step to it, receive the ball. I don't want that turnover on my stat sheet. Let's see if he has a valid complaint. Yeah, you, you kind of got to, I don't want to say lazy, but not established post. So it's almost on Darius Perry to say, he's not established, I'm not taking that risk. And then Sutton drew a foul with the shot clock winding down. Second foul on Tyler Cheese. Another big night for Dwayne Sutton, 72% in his career from the free throw line. Monday after Arkansas Georgia Tech men's basketball, the all ACC team will have the latest scores, news, and info from around the conference. 9 p.m. Eastern right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Four games tomorrow with ACC teams involved. That includes what you saw on the top right of your screen, Virginia Tech in Maui, taking on Cassius Winston and number three Michigan State tomorrow. Now he sounds pretty good right about now. When does it not sound <laughs> Long arms of Enoch out of deflection. Coming in, you know, having seen so much tape and watching Louisville on TV, and you know how big of a, a fan I am of this team and the belief that they can win the national championship this very season. I've been most impressed with live defensively the effort and the physicality of this team. They've got some impressive bodies. Nice floater from Jackson. A and you have said, not just are they perhaps the best team in the conference, you think perhaps the best team in the country. Yeah, absolutely. With, with the depth, with the level of talent. These aren't superior athletes, but they're versatile athletes, and that's a dangerous thing. Guys have played to get played a lot of basketball, some of them together. Exactly. Continuity's prices. Yeah, they're getting more and more depth. Ah! Ali Ali with the rebound off the war miss. And Cheese has a foul. 
Oh, we've certainly had the fouls piling up here in the second half. Louisville, and we're up 15. Glad to say Anthony Davis when when you're a Louisville guy. Yeah, I was surprised. I thought I was gonna, I was going to let that one slide by because he's having such a special day. But can you argue with his biggest fear? I mean, who's going to debate that? No shot. I want no part of it. with ants. I mean, yeah, it, it does not sound like fun. Uh, you probably didn't have to deal with that in the, the communication major at some point, but you can see he's comfortable, one of the guys already with a degree. Yeah, and when you've got four guys and the fifth is, is a walk-on who doesn't play big minutes, but those other four guys, when that part of the, the experience has been wholly eliminated, now they are still taking classes. That is, has to be mentioned here. They're taking credits, but the major workload is in the past. So these guys can focus a lot on basketball and not necessarily the rigors of a heavy academic undertaking. That's big because they handled business early. Kudos to those young men. Yeah, so many guys are putting in time in the class in the summer as well when they're here on campus. Families must be incredibly proud. Got themselves an education maxed out on that part of it. And out here playing ball now. Traveling called on Stephen Enoch, and Chris Mack just screamed that it was a foul instead. Enoch, great spacing right here, one-on-one -on -one basketball. Yeah, I mean, it was heavy contact. Bang, bang, play. I could see the argument to be made. Reese did make him meet a chest, and as physical a player as Enoch is, you can bounce off that not flopping. I don't hate the call. I don't. Enoch to the bench. He has the seat after the turnover. Reese couldn't handle the pass from Jackson. Williams turns and draws. What do you know? Another foul. 6'11", Malik Williams. The defender, Cameron Reese, 6'7". I'll put my money on 6'11 in that regard every time. Fourth foul on Cameron Reese. A couple of games now that we've been able to see Malik Williams. What do you think of him as he comes back from the foot injury? He's got a way to go to catch his wind, find his rhythm. The skill set speaks for itself. Young man's only going to get better and better. And with him and Stephen Enoch dominating that 4-5 spot, usually one or the other not on the floor at the same time, it's another dangerous part of the arsenal for Louisville. Now they had said six to eight weeks, the injury in September this past Friday, just a couple of days ago. That marked nine weeks from the injury when he just landed funny after a hook shot in practice. And it helps the team, gives them confidence. He's one of the vocal leaders. He's one of the leaders, period. He's a captain on this team. His voice, his skill set is needed on the floor to enhance the product for these cards. He now faces up. And now Williamson kicking for Kimball. Cheese has been pushing all night. It's a blocking foul. John Gross thinks goaltending as well. Cheese here is a lefty. It's absolutely a charge. Ah. Well, it didn't hit the glass. I, if I get one more look, was it going up still? When it got clipped? Let's see. Oh, that's that's clean. Yeah. That's clean. I'm with you. Third foul on Darius Perry. That's how talented Louisville is. Lost in the sauce, lost in the shuffle right now with all the names we're mentioning. <laughs> Samuel Williamson at 6'7. Uh, an All-American who's got an incredibly high ceiling and, and what he's going to be able to contribute to this team. And for him, he's got the luxury of not having to be special right away like a lot of McDonald's All-Americans have to be for their programs because this team is so rich in talent. Nice hands. The guy who is number 24 in our ESPN 100. And like you said, yeah, McDonald's All-American. So smooth, so fluid, so mature, high IQ guy. Incredibly versatile again, along the line of everybody on this roster. 
Williams, the offensive rebound and the putback, plus a foul. Malik Williams has been yearning for this position of being to hear his name cheer to go to the free throw line with an and one. This young man has been working tires, tireless, tirelessly to get back to moments like this. He's been the biggest proponent for his teammates, a voice on the bench while out with injury, trying to do his part. And now he's back here scoring and making plays. Couldn't cap off the three-point play, so it's just under six to go. It's a 16-point Cardinals lead. Jackson snakes to the basket and a high teardrop. That was a beauty. Steady hasn't scored. And now here's the freshman you mentioned. Passing out of a double. Three to shoot. Kimball. Step back three. Out of contact, no foul. Jackson in transition. Rebound Williamson. He has been big on the boards. He's got a half dozen. Warren took the contact and an offensive foul. And yes, Warren did come to a stop, but maybe a, a half step too late. That's gotta be a mid-range pull up. Just take a look right here. That's where you pull up. That's a charge. Sublime defensive anticipation by the Akron defender to take that charge. He's out with four fouls for now with just under five left in this second half. You drew the comparison earlier to the West Virginia game for Akron when they just kept hanging around, and now it's a dozen. Cheese with two more. He's got a team-high 17. I, I don't think the crowd understands that this is still a game as some have been filing out for the last few minutes. Akron, exactly like you said, was in this position with the Mountaineers and did not give up. Showing no signs of it right now either. Williams is trying to keep Louisville afloat. Williams to the loose ball. to get to single digits right here. Cheese got stripped. Great defensive work by Sutton. Shoveled off to Kimball. And the finish. Your do-it-all guy, Dwayne Sutton, making plays. Banks hits a 6-3, and it's 11 with just under four left. Or getting ready to come back in. Williamson, back iron. Malik Williams took a friendly fire shot from Perry. Good post pass. And Sutton defensively poked it out of bounds. Akron will have it with 3.25 to go in Louisville. And an 11 point game for the number two team in the country. Akron is not going away. More plays like this from Louisville. Can they hold them off? Fresh Kimball. Fresh. In a game, you want to be in a lead on stars. Jordan Wara, absolutely that for this team. To fill it up and fill it up quickly. And then Steven Enoch, I've been really impressed with his interior presence. Really established for dominance there in the trenches. Some big time plays from him. And show that versatility. All big men these days can step out and dial it down for distance. Enoch, no different. The numbers in total for those two, but as you look at Jordan Wara, he's only had three in this second half, and that came within the first two minutes of this second half. Yeah, absolutely. And let's not exclude Dwayne Sutton, who's got 10 points and 14 rebounds. It's a big time defensive plays when the cards are needed. Enoch didn't bite on the shot fake from Reese. Jackson to the loose ball and another floater. First time it's been single digits since there were four minutes left in the first half. Here comes the pressure. They're going to pursue some doubles here. 
His press worked well against West Virginia. Louisville breaks it. We're in attack mode, and he's blocked by Cheese. This is a re-energized Akron team. And you take a look here. Warren thought it was home free. Not giving up on a play. Tyler Cheese, the senior guard, who's been an offensive presence consistently throughout, making a big-time play there to save a basket. You like going to the basket there with 20-plus seconds on the shot clock? Yeah, of course. I mean, Jordan War is wired to score. He's got to be in attack mode no matter time or score. Drives again. No foul. And Jackson to the loose ball in a nine-point game. Still about three left. Williams, can he finally hit one? Too strong. And when you talk about needing your stars, you need Zerius Williams to give you something else. You need him. Arguably the most skilled player on the team has been quiet. 0 of 6 from 3. Warren, straight on. And a foul underneath on the rebounding action goes on Dang Riak, his third. Steven Ina, the fight. Ball goes up. You know your shooter, your star player, your go-to offensive guy is going to try and make something happen. So the rebounding anticipation. Ball's going up. Let me get in there, carve out some real estate, see what I can do. He knocked three of five at the line tonight. For how this game has played out for the majority of the evening, it's a three-possession game. It's incredible. Got to give Coach Gross's squad some credit here. Enoch splits. Louisville has missed eight free throws as a team in this one. And Malik Williams came in to replace him. 2.20 left, 10-point game for the number two team in the country. Unbeaten to this point, getting a challenge from Akron at home. Williams still cannot get one to drop. Offensive rebound. Tyler Cheese off the spin. No. I admire the trust and respect of Zerius Williams and their team to say, let's still get him looks. They're pristine ones and hoping he'll snap out of it, but he just can't seem to get right no matter how good of a look it is. 1.49 to go for John Gross and Akron. The huddle with Jack Collinsworth, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel, and Mark Rick gets you ready for ACC football live Friday, 4 Eastern, Saturday at 2 Eastern, right here on ACCN and the ESPN app. Lobo hung 56 on Syracuse to get its seventh win of the season yesterday. You mentioned Javion Hawkins earlier, 200 plus rushing yards for him. I mean, Coach Satterfield. Feels like the coach of the year to me in the ACC. Look, you can give it to Dabo every season, and maybe it's unfair that we just accept his excellence. But it has been nothing short of excellent what Coach Satterfield has done with that football team here in town. They've had some high praise throughout the season, and when we were talking at halftime about Chris Mack as well. well what's his message here, 149 left? Guard. Get back and transition, not allow anything off a of miss. Get back and run, be ready to guard. Continue to work on the backboard to eliminate second chance. Close out on shooters, hug the real shooters, which tonight have been Banks and Cheese primarily. Jackson is giving you some. And you can sag off Zerius Williams at this point right now because he can't find his. But transition defense and defense in general is what the focus is in that huddle. You've not had to worry about Louisville offensively at all if you're just tuning in to see the finish the faithful here inside the kfc yum center saw louisville and jordan war lead by 16 at halftime akron just minutes ago finally got it back down to single digits this is a program that's been to multiple ncaa tournaments recently and should be one of the top teams in the mid-american conference how about the freshman david johnson on the floor here in a late game scenario Lost it on the way up, and it goes back to Akron. Now we are under two minutes with 131 left, and the initial signal was possession to Akron. Let's take a look as 
Yeah, it did look like the body caused Johnson to just simply lose the ball. Louisville's 12th turnover of the game. We're gonna take a look. Within those two minutes, they'll be able to review this. To see if possession was indeed deserving to go to Akron. Was this off Johnson as the initial whistle was, or is there enough to overturn that call? Brian Dorsey and Pat Driscoll having a look at it. Well, so they have said that it'll stick with Akron here. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, just say so they wanted to make sure they got it right. And what you see there is that is just trying to switch hands with Johnson, and he lost that on his own accord. Freshman takes a seat now. 90 seconds to go. 10-point game here in the second half. Williams still firing, still missing. Now 0 of 8 from 3. I tell you, they're good looks. They're within the confines and rhythm of that offense. Just can't get it to go. John Gross told us at shoot-around, that's the skill he has done best in his college career. He's still doing so many things for Akron. He's just not hitting the shots, and that's been his calling card in his career. Offensive foul. Coach Mack can't be happy with the execution and the value of the basketball here down the stretch. Louisville has allowed Akron to get them out of rhythm. Hurried them up, taken them out of their comfort zone, and mistakes have ensued. This will be the focus in the film session. Some defensive lapses, but ultimately decision-making at critical moments. Because of it, now McMahon, for as good of a free throw shooter as he has down the stretch, he takes the seat too. Jackson banks on the baseline, no. Tyler Cheese hoists and hits. Seven point game. I tell you, it almost feels like time may run out on Akron. But let's be clear. There is game left, thanks to the lucky lefty, Tyler Cheese. Like they say, Cheddar's what, money? He's been money down the stretch here for Akron. He's got a team high 20 in this one. Meanwhile, Jordan Wara, we told you he had 15 in the first half, and his only points in the second half came at the 18-19 mark. And it's a good exercise for this Louisville team to understand that there's gonna be nights where defenses take away your star. There's plenty of other stars on the roster. Stephen Enoch has stepped up. You, you see Dwayne Sutton deliver double figures, a double figure score this season for this team. And other guys have chipped in at points. Williams, Perry. It's a balanced attack, so generating offense is not going to be a challenge for this team. But defensively, and valuing the basketball, and defending the arc, quite frankly, here, these are things that they're going to need to improve on as the season progresses. So we've got 39 seconds left. Tyler Cheese leading his team on what they hope is the comeback trail. Both teams in the double bonus. Akron out of timeouts. Louisville's got one. And Louisville better understand that as, as they've struggled to take care of the ball here down the stretch, there's going to be blitzes coming at them here out of this. This is going to be an Akron team with a full-on press, almost likened to the press that Louisville fans have been accustomed to seeing so many years prior to Mac in the pageant year. That kind of pressure on the court here, trying to generate a turnover. And we've kept alluding to the West Virginia game for Akron. The Akron press worked well on the Mountaineers down the stretch in that one. And when you lack a true point guard or you're trying to figure out who it is, this is not the position you want to be in for the cards. Wow. And a turnover right away. Ryan McMahon just pleaded with Pat Drisco. He said, he's all over me if we're reading his lips from the sideline. And then he said, he's, he's grabbing my jersey. This shows you, this illustrates exactly what's going on with Louisville right now. A loaded team. But Mike. Who's their point guard in moments like this to eliminate these errors in judgment? 
You said it to Chris Mack, that is your biggest concern with this Louisville team. Jackson speeds to the hoop. Five-point game, Akron out of timeouts, 31 seconds. Who wants the basketball if you're Louisville? Jackson went reaching, and Kimball draws a foul. And they get it on Zurius Williams, who has fouled out. And Ryan McMahon was pleading that there was so much contact along the sideline. And they went to that same spot this time in the direction of Kimball. And Williams committed the foul. They're just flipping into this one. That's Zurius Williams, a Dayton transfer, a fifth year senior. Only six points today in this one. He has just struggled to shoot it. 0 of 8 from 3 for a guy who could be all Mac in his first year playing for the Zips. Imagine if he's able to knock down some of those threes. What kind of story this becomes. <laughs> Food for thought for Mac opposition out there for an Akron team that feels incredibly dangerous. Now, if you're Akron, this goes in. You got to get it. You got to play fast here. A split for Kimball. Six-point wow. game. Jackson high off the window. Four-point game. They foul Perry, who in his career is an 82% free throw shooter. Took a poke to the eye, too. You want to know what it's great to have a 5'8 player on your team? When you got to go the length of the court in half a second. With the offhand practice back in the day in Chicago no doubt every Chicago guard has a handle Lauren Christian Jackson no different that is Xavier Simpson s game so nice they named him thrice <laughs> Lauren Christian Jackson let you know he's in the building all right so here's Perry first time at the line tonight he's good on the first for a Louisville team that has missed nine free throws tonight game doesn't mean you need a three as fast as Chris Lauren Christian Jackson gets up and down the floor you can pursue a very quick two gotta go gets by Perry and scores again Christian Jackson put on a clinic there is nobody defensively who can keep the 5'8 dynamo in front he is putting on an impressive performance down the stretch just stands up the defender here. Darius Perry, who's the best defensive player, arguably on the roster. Gets him upright, gets to the rim. We sat in on Louisville shoot around today. They spent a lot of time, Dino Gaudio in particular, talking about how to defend Lauren Christian Jackson. And they said he is so fast, but he wants to pull up and shoot threes. This is a change for Louisville defensively to adjust to. And you can't scout or prepare for something like that. Much like we hear about the Bay Hive Syracuse zone. They, they have the bodies to defend you like that. This young man's 5'8". Who on Louisville's roster can emulate what he brings? So you're figuring it out on the fly. And you're failing more times than not to keep him in front. This was their best offense all game long, to be honest. Break down off the dribble, so Coach Gross may have discovered a new weapon. But going back to Louisville here, get it to one guy who's comfortable with the basketball, who will knock down a free throws getting fouled. Who is that? Is it Darius Perry? Is it Jordan Wara? It feels to me right now like it's Ryan McMahon. They give it to him. And they foul him, a guy who coming into tonight, 100 out of 110 from the free throw line in his career. Very dangerous place to get it to him, but you can see the desperation of Louisville to just say, we don't know who can handle this pressure, but we know who can knock down free throws, so let's get him the ball and hope for an early foul. I mean, you don't see that very often. That's your entry attempt? I think Akron should have just sat back and said, catch it. Then here comes a trap. Because you're in a bad spot. Seven of seven this year for McMahon. Remember last year, 57 of 60 made his final 21 free throw attempts of the season. It's pretty good. 
Pretty good. Six point game. As fast as Jackson gets up and down the floor, you could take another two. At this point, though, I feel like you need a three ball. If that's the plan, Channel Banks has hit six you of them. Three. You need a three. Jackson pulls up. Can't get it to go. Loose ball. Jackson gets to it with eight left. Cheese. Off of War with 3.3 .3 left, but it looks like Louisville's out of harm's way. Lauren Christian Jackson put that ball down. The basketball gods decided to regurgitate it. This was a one possession game, it felt like. Banks. Louisville survives. Enough plays made down the stretch for the Cardinals to stave off a stunning upset. The fight of Akron, much like it occurred in Morgantown versus a Bob Huggins squad, they never gave up despite the deficit. They fought. It's a dangerous team that has a chance to win a title in that league. Louisville has things to work on. I believe that this is my front runner for the title, but they've got places to adjust. Tons of talent, but room for improvement, Mike. Final score, 82-76. Louisville is 6-0. For Jordan Cornette, producer Jim Piscitelli, director Johnny Hanna, our entire ACC network crew, Mike Monaco saying so long from the KFC Young Center in Louisville, Kentucky.